Welcome back to Windows Wednesday here on Switch to Linux, where Windows begins its campaign to tell you to throw away your computers. That's right. Let's have a look. Thanks for checking out this channel. If you've not subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do that. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And around here, we like giving you information about Linux and uh, how to switch, why to switch, things like this. Of course, our Windows Wednesday, we talk about some of the weird stuff going on in the Windows world, which is kind of the motivation why I switch. For the people sitting there going, you're talking about Windows too much over here on the Linux channel. It's fundamental to, because I switched to Linux because of Windows shenanigans. And today we want to cover a few more of those Windows shenanigans. We're going to be looking at uh, four points over here. The first point here is that uh, Windows end of life is coming if you're on Windows 10. And if you've not already upgraded to 11, they're going to basically tell you, you got to throw your stuff away and buy something new. And uh, of course, they are uh, contributing to e-waste while trying to solve and virtue signal on their e-waste. But then we see another company step in and jump right in and say, you don't need to throw away your computer. Use our solution instead. And we're going to show you why that's insane. And then we're going to wrap up the video telling you what you should probably think about doing instead. So let's go ahead and dive on in. And of course, we're going to start with Windows end of life campaign is coming soon. So I was browsing through X or Twitter or whatever we're calling it this week, the other day. And uh, Bob Pony, uh, the Bob Pony shows us an email, presumably he received. Microsoft is sending out emails to all Windows 10 users about the upcoming end of support for Windows 10. I will specify they're only sending out emails to the users they have their emails for. So if you have never created that Windows account, hey, you probably have not received the email. So I'm going ahead and alerting you of this today. Uh, of course, I haven't received one of those. Of course, I have that Windows 10 Surface up there, you know, uh, that gets turned on once every six months to see if the battery still functions. But, you know, that being said, of course, uh, wind, uh, end of uh, support for Windows 10 is approaching. Check your upgrade eligibility or explore new computers. Of course, if you check your eligibility, if you can upgrade to Windows 11, then uh, if you could have done that by now, you probably have. Or you're like, uh, not until the last possible second, my friend, because ooh, Windows 11 nightmare fuel. Nightmare fuel, I'm telling you. And then, of course, you can explore new computers. And uh, apparently you could click that link and, you know, be upsold a thousand dollar computer right now. Maybe a $1,200 computer if uh, tariffs are in play right now or not. I don't know. Uh, but again, you know, do we all have disposable income to throw away a perfectly good working computer because Microsoft said, yeah, we just don't want to support it anymore. Especially after saying it was the last Windows version there will ever be. Remember that? Right when Windows 7 was leaving, Windows 10 comes out. This is the last Windows there will ever be. Well, that only lasted until they can upsell it another version. So what it, does it mean frequently ask questions. What does this mean for me? After October 14th, 2025, Microsoft will no longer provide free software updates from Windows Update, technical assistance, or security fixes for Windows 10. So the most attacked Windows, uh, the most attacked operating system, we should say, is Windows class of operating systems. They will no longer be fixing security bugs. How enjoyable. Uh, number two, what can I do with my old computer? Well, you can trade it in. For what purpose? Now, those of us that are switching to Linux are really looking forward to the used computer market in October. Oh, I'm salivating. I'm throwing some money into the corners. I can't wait for amazing computers to get on the market so I can switch to Linux. Maybe we have a business opportunity here. Buy up a bunch of computers, install Linux, and run a, a local training course on how to use Linux. That would be epic. I don't know. Uh, if you use that idea, you know, cut me in for 5% for your idea. I'd appreciate it. Maybe just go over to our uh, locals page, uh, and, uh, sign up over there. That'll help, you know, whatever. Anyway, switch to linux.locals.com. So will my windows 10 PC stop working? No, your PC will continue to work, but support will be discontinued. And then how is windows 11 more secure? Windows 11 is the most secure windows ever built. It's just full of security holes like Swiss cheese. 
with comprehensive end-to-end security that covers antivirus, firewall, internet protections, and more. Read more about Windows security. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, all the security means they're hoisting upon us is actually making things worse for the end consumer. From automatically encrypting your data and you don't even know it's encrypted, so when something goes funky on your computer and you need your data off your hard drive, you don't have your decryption key. But don't worry, Microsoft has solved that and stores your decryption keys on your Microsoft account. So when some uh, uh, when some gag order warrant comes through because you jogged by a bank that happened to be you know robbed later on and they go to Microsoft, they can get your encryption key, they can decrypt your drive, but you can't. Sorry, you know, uh, these are all real issues. Of course, they have to put, they cannot get away with any messaging at all without forcing a OneDrive ad in there. If you plan to keep using your Windows 10 PC, we recommend keeping your files backed up and easily accessible from across devices using OneDrive. You know, because basically you're going to get encryption uh, ransomware over there. Of course, if encryption ransomware gets in your system, that can get into your OneDrive account and affect your other things up there as well. So this is not a bulletproof solution. Go to offline stuff. So uh, thanks for uh, the Bob Pony for uh, sharing that uh, email with us. Of course, uh, this is Windows telling us that uh, the system is going to uh, keep working but lack all security, you know, uh, even though this was supposed to be the last Windows version. Sorry. Uh, But what's going to go on here is, uh, of course, this is going to generate massive amounts of e-waste as tons and tons and tons of perfectly good computers. And let's be honest, folks, while we should all appropriately deal with our technology, we should all trade it in somewhere as if anybody's going to. Is anybody going to see a resale value on these computers? They can't run Windows 11. They're obsolete. This is crazy. Or recycle it. Not a lot of people even know that they can go to their local uh, local dump in most places and don't and uh, uh, turn in your electronics for free. Most people don't realize that. So what happens to them? Well, usually they just get dumped inside of the trash cans because it's radically inconvenient to dispose of all of this e-waste that is generated. But um, don't worry, folks. Don't worry. Microsoft is solving the e-waste problem. This is kind of like paving the, uh, they're actually chopping down acres and acres and acres of rainforests right now to build a four-lane highway for the uh, for the climate change summit in uh, 20, I think 2030, I think. Look it up, guys. They are literally chopping down Amazon rainforests to build a four-lane highway to support the traffic coming into the city for a climate change summit. Okay, you just can't make this stuff up. This is awesome. You don't don't trust me. Go search for it right now on some search engine. Are they really chopping it? Yes, yes, they are. I saw pictures. It's great. But don't worry. Microsoft is going to counteract all of this e-waste of throwing away all these perfectly fine working computers because now the Windows Surface Pros in some regions no longer have a uh, a power supply. You can buy a computer now without a power supply. Why? Because their packaging is smaller and everyone doesn't need another power supply. They have a power supply. So if you want to go trade in your old Windows 10 computer, you can't trade in the power supply with it. No, that wouldn't make too much sense. But of course, this is a marketing ploy for Microsoft because, you know, now they can upsell. They're upselling the charger. If you need a new charger with your new computer, they're upselling you $80. Now, it says $40. There's VAT there. So uh, let's say it's $40 in case there's some oddities in this. This is 40 pounds, of course. Uh, in the article text, they make reference to 80 or uh, 80, uh, 90 euros or 80 pounds uh, to uh, get the uh, the charge with it. Now, this is not Microsoft coming out and saying we're doing this to solve the environment. This is Microsoft coming out because the EU has said you have to reduce e-waste. And so certain devices, so like I think the I think the computers might come with them, but like the more tablety type ones, those ones don't come with them. I think that kind of is how it's uh, it's boiling itself down in, in all honesty. I think that's probably the case. So, uh, but anyway, they are solving the the e-waste problem by eliminating power cables. So, don't look over here at the giant pile of uh, giant pile of computers we're generating by stopping security patches on Windows 10 at an arbitrary date. Don't look at that pile of stuff over here. Look at the fact that we're going to stop giving you power supplies with your new computers unless you want to pay eighty dollars for another one. 
interesting. So in the midst of all of this craziness, who comes out with a solution? Google, of course. Isn't this awesome? Uh, months before millions of PCs will get stuck on Windows 10, Google makes the case for running Chrome OS for your systems. So I actually downloaded the Chrome OS Flex. I got it installed on real hardware. It works on your old Windows 10 computer. And I can't show you how the system works because you cannot use this system without a Google account. I am not plugging one of my Google accounts into it for a test system, and I cannot create a test Google account without providing them a phone number, which they're not getting. So, you know, that's kind of the case. That's kind of the problem we got right now. Maybe I should just go out to the store and pick up like a... Uh, you know, a, a one month trial of Mint Mobile or something to give it a phone number just for the lols. I don't know. You guys want to see that? If enough people down there, maybe somebody wants to be like, hey, here's a tip for the video. Maybe I'll go and get a Mint Mobile card, throw it in one of my spare phones here and uh, set up a Google account to see how how uh, Chrome Flex, uh, Chrome OS Flex works. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. But anyway, I'll show you the setup installation here. Uh, just to, it's it's like installing a Linux distribution, only a lot less options. I I can't specify which hard drive it goes to, so you better only have one in there. And once you get it booted up, uh, it wants to do an auto update, and then it forces you to line, sign in with Google. That's exciting. But anyway, what their push is here is that you can use. Uh, you can use the Chrome OS Flex. It will work on an Intel-based computer. does not have to be a, a Chromebook or anything. does not have to be an ARM processor. I did get it running on my system here. So their selling point is that Microsoft 365 applications are available on Chrome OS. So you will have a very usable system. The Chrome OS, uh, Chrome OS devices can be set up to automatically log into 365. Uh, with the single sign-on powered with Microsoft Entra ID. They also can set up OneDrive so that all of the data goes into there, and you can set the system up so that nothing is saved locally on the device, everything through OneDrive. Now, these are all selling points for Enterprise. So this is not necessarily a home solution, although you can use Chrome OS Flex for signing into your system and still using your computer as a basic internet device you can get in and you can do that so it would be a stopgap or if you're like i i have nothing to hide and uh i worship at the altar of google's data collection chrome os flex is a solution for you it's not a full operating system it's all web browser based it has to be on the internet to turn on you're not doing anything outside of the google or in this case microsoft ecosystem but it is a viable solution. But the question that most of us are going to have is why might we want to do that type of system when you can very easily run Linux, which is its own system. And I'm going to show you what Linux looks like because I realize that I've mentioned on these videos several times, hey, try out Linux, but I've never actually gone in there and showed you what it looks like in the video. I've always referred you to another video. So here is actually my Mint on a uh, virtual machine here and running it on a regular computer is just as fine. Actually, it works a little bit better on a regular computer. But this is what you get with Linux Mint. You install Linux Mint on your system and uh, let me verify which version this is. I think this is a little bit old at this point in time, but let's have a look. Okay, so this is Linux Mint 21.3. So it is a little bit older version. The new version at the time I'm recording this video is 22.1. That's actually the version of Linux Mint that I'm running to create this video for you to see. My All my recording, all my editing, everything is done on this. So it's good. But this one here, what I'm going to show you is a little bit older. When you first log in and get signed into this system here, you can uh, you have a full web browser. You know, it ships with Firefox, although there are a dozen web browsers you can easily install. There's my notifications. You saw there we have security updates. This thing is free forever, so you can continue to use it. There are a number of different tools. Here's calculators and archive managers for zips and things like that. So if somebody sends you a zip file, you can open it up. The character map, I 
think that might be coming out in a new version. I believe I heard something about that. Uh, but we have USB image writers. We have sh share, uh, file sharing on local networks, uh, uh, screenshot utilities, text editors, just all the basic system tools. And then you can install things like here is uh, GIMP. Uh, there's a basic drawing tool set up. Here's, uh, let's see... Here I have the Chromium web browser installed. We have a full suite automatically installed for Office software. So if you need to write up Office documents or things like that, you know, you have a full suite Office software here, all free. You don't have to pay an annual subscription to run this kind of stuff. Everything saves locally to your system. <clears throat> And by the way, if you do like using online accounts, if you're like, well, you know, I do use some of those online accounts, you can actually set up online accounts. Uh, so here I have a Nextcloud set up there. And uh, you can do uh, Google accounts, you can do Microsoft accounts, you can do a Microsoft Exchange. So there's a number of different things that you can set up. Even if you do use online accounts, you can still use all those here on, uh, on Linux. And so there we have some interesting options. I mean, this is a full-fledged operating system. All of your files are here local on your device. It works like any other computer system. It's just as easy to use. The reality is many people just don't realize that this is an option. It is free to download. It is easy to get installed. They have setup instructions. And you might ask around. You might know somebody who uses this or say, hey, can you help me work with this? And this is a good viable solution. Now, I do warn people that you you want to make sure that you're not completely cold turkey switching. So use this six month window between now and when Windows 10 goes out of life. You can get this installed on an external hard drive. And I just bought an external, a really good external hard drive for 150. You can buy much smaller ones for like 50 bucks now. You can install Linux on that external hard drive, use it without changing anything on your existing computer. That way, once your system goes out of date, Windows is no longer supporting it. They're telling you to trade it in and buy a brand new $1,000 computer. You can install this. It's going to be really easy to do. And you can continue to use your computer. Now, it's not for everybody. If there are some deep proprietary application you have to have, you might need to go in with that. But if you're a person that has to have some application, you're probably already on Windows 11 already. So these are just some tips and some tricks to help you out. Hopefully you get a chance to see that eh, the Google solution may not be an option. Selling and buying a brand new computer may not be an option, but Linux might be an option. And there are dozens of Linux distributions. I recommend most people start on Linux Mint, the one I just showed you because it is super easy, it's super compatible, super stable. I've had very, very few troubles with it over the years of using Linux and Linux Mint. Uh, but once you get comfortable with that, you might look around at a more niche system. You might like a Fedora or an Ubuntu. Some people like Zorin, uh, Linux Lite. Uh, I use MX Linux on some of my devices as well. I mean, there are so many great Linux distributions out there. I'd recommend you just like, don't be like, oh, which one to use? Don't be paralyzed by your analysis. Get in there, use the Linux, sys, like use Linux Mint just to start. You don't have to stay on it forever and then go from there. And once you get comfortable, start looking around at some of the other options that you have. So there are our thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about these. Leave a uh, like and a comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.